Well, there is a really bizarre reason why I decided to start this video with a video game. Essentially going back to my roots when I used to teach everything including science and math by using a variety of different simulations and of course video games as well. But as you can see, this one is maybe just a little bit bizarre. It does seem to produce quite a lot of very strange visual effects. And that's because that's the main purpose behind this game. Although in this case, calling this a game is maybe a bit of a misnomer. This is a really intriguing MIT project known as A Slower Speed of Light that was actually featured on this channel something like 10 years ago. And while the main point in this particular game, or I guess the simulation, is to help us visualize various difficult to imagine Einsteinian relativity effects. In other words, this is a visual representation of many different effects that we actually expect to observe when something starts to move at the speed of light. And the way this game works is really pretty simple. I mean, it does have some kind of a storyline, although in this case it doesn't really matter that much, because here the main point is to collect these unusual spheres. And as you collect more and more of these unusual watermelons, you eventually start moving closer and closer to the speed of light. And while the brilliant part of the simulation here is that it's able to recreate quite a lot of relativistic effects pretty well. And so here you're going to have to deal with me playing this game for just a few minutes. So essentially, as we collect more and more watermelons, or I guess these relativistic watermelons, things start to get a little bit more complicated, and we also start to experience a lot more effects. Now, all in all, you're supposed to collect 100, but notice how even after about 35, things already start to look pretty different. And things start to get really difficult as well. I'm actually really struggling to move my character now because as you start acquiring relativistic effects, you also start to acquire energy, which basically increases your overall momentum and makes motion super challenging. And so here we are at about 60% of the speed of light. And as you can see by moving in a single direction, everything becomes extremely blue shifted. However, if I reverse, everything becomes red shifted. These are obviously the most well-known effects when it comes to light and relativity. But by collecting more watermelons, at some point as we start getting closer and closer to approximately 90% of the speed of light, we also start experiencing additional effects. For example, length contraction, which becomes very apparent once you get to about 95 to 99 relativistic watermelons. And so here if I start moving with 99% of the speed of light, Notice how everything in front of me basically gets extended dramatically. However, if I were to look behind, I guess this spaceship or whatever this is, things would actually appear much closer to me. Which actually becomes even easier to imagine if you start moving sideways and if you kind of look from the side. And though initially these were just theoretical principles based on the Einsteinian special theory of relativity, all of these main assumptions, the time dilation, the length contraction, the Lorentz transformation of velocities, and even the relativity of simultaneity, were eventually physically proven through a variety of different experiments. And I mean, one of the best known examples where it actually applies to real life today is of course GPS satellites. GPS satellites, because of their motion around the planet, have to always account for the time dilation effects, otherwise they would just not work properly. Likewise, in one of the recent videos where we discussed the experiments based on particle collisions in the CERN particle accelerator, there the formation of gold from lead was also the result of relativistic effects, and specifically length contraction, because the particles were moving so ridiculously fast. Or basically the object has a different length at rest compared to when it moves really really fast. But there is actually one additional Einsteinian effect that was explored by scientists a few decades back that has been predicted but never physically proven. And it actually is kind of simulated here as well, although here it's maybe a little bit more difficult to see. Anyway, let me actually show you a much better visualization that might help explain this a little bit better. Now by the way, this particular game is absolutely free and you can find it in the description below. And the wonderful people who created this unfortunately stopped updating this project a long time ago. I was actually hoping for the next part where they promised to make this into some kind of a space game, which would make a lot of sense, but it just never came to be. I guess they moved on with their lives and possibly started doing something else. Nevertheless, the link for this is in the description. And it does work on Mac, Linux, and of course Windows. But anyway, let's discuss this additional effect and how in a recent experiment researchers were finally able to officially recreate it. And the only effect that has previously not been confirmed through experiments. And this is known as the Terrell Penrose effect, although I guess more officially just Terrell effect. 
the effect you see visualized right here. And it's basically the effect that seems to change the visual appearance of an object as you pass next to it extremely fast. Now previously, in many different books on special relativity, the near speed of light motion was always described as producing the contraction effect first. Or basically the passing object here would be contracted, such as in this case on the left, from a sphere to some kind of a flattened ellipsoid. But turns out that this is maybe not entirely correct. As in the contraction is still going to happen, but what we actually see is going to be very different. And the visual appearance on the right is a lot more accurate. So basically here, the sphere is still kind of spherical, and it will still maintain its overall outline, but as the sphere moves at these very fast velocities of 0.999999 speed of light, it's actually going to appear slightly rotated. And something very similar happens right here with this cube. Even though it is contracted, the visual appearance does not make it look so, instead it appears to be rotated. And this is what's usually referred to as the Terrell rotation or Terrell effect. It's a kind of a visual distortion of an object moving at near the speed of light that will make it appear slightly rotated as a result of the special theory of relativity. And it was initially discussed not by Einstein, but by someone entirely different. It was Anton. Uh, not this Anton. The Austrian physicist Anton Lampa. And he proposed this back in 1924 after reading Einsteinian theories. But it was further developed in 1959 by both Penrose and the American James Terrell, who essentially realized that Einsteinian predictions, especially things like contraction, did not really apply to the visual observations, they only apply to the object's physical properties. Or just to rephrase this, as something moves faster and faster and faster, it does physically seem to contract. And this is the result of the reference frame proposed by Einstein. As a matter of fact, the idea of reference frame plays a huge role in relativity, with I think one of the most mind-blowing explanations being right here. This is the idea behind relativity of simultaneity. In the entire universe, as objects move at different velocities, it's actually impossible to say which event happened first. As a matter of fact, as you can see right here, if nothing is moving at all, the events A, B, and C happen at the same time. But if you start moving toward one point, or in the opposite direction, you'll actually start seeing these events happening at completely different times. Which is why when we're talking about the universe and especially really far distances or extremely high velocities, you always have to consider the frame of reference. Because the universe does not have this objective reference frame. The time is relative, the space is relative, and everything far away from us is also relative. And here I actually wanted to mention a kind of a personal gripe. Sometimes I hear people talk about very far away objects, such as for example different stars like maybe Betelgeuse, as possibly not existing anymore because we're seeing light from those stars as it left us hundreds, thousands or even millions of years ago. Maybe Betelgeuse no longer exists because it already went supernova. But Einstein would actually disagree with this because that's not a correct way of thinking about this. Betelgeuse still exists just because there is really no objective frame here and it's incorrect to assume that somehow we can actually escape the galaxy and look from the top just to see Betelgeuse as it currently is in its own frame. But anyway, that's beside the point. The point here is that there are quite a lot of these effects and many of them actually have been experimentally proven. This effect, for example, is also sometimes referred to as the Sagnac effect, which actually has been detected in various experiments using a lot of lasers and a lot of mirrors. We'll talk about this in some of the future videos, so, you know, subscribe and stuff. With the most famous effect, the time dilation, proven experimentally many, many different times using a lot of different particles. But not Terrell rotation. So far, this particular effect has been theoretical, and it was very difficult to try to prove this because we just don't really have objects moving at these ridiculous velocities. But the prediction was still here. Basically, because these objects are moving so fast, every photon from the object would also experience a kind of a time lag. Or in other words, photons from different parts of the object would reach us at different times. And as a result of this trailing light, different parts of the object would reach our eyes at different times and thus make this object appear as if it's basically rotating or as if it's kind of skewed in one direction. But this was just a theoretical explanation, and since 1959 has never really been proven. But now, extremely recently, researchers from the University of Vienna, in a collaboration with different artists, managed to create a really interesting device that's able to simulate this and once and for all 
prove the existence of this particular phenomenon. And so something that began as an art science project by an artist in Art de Dios Rodriguez eventually became a physical experiment. An experiment involving extremely fast pulsing lasers, several precision cameras, and an interesting setup you see right here, which in essence allowed the researchers to simulate a tremendously slow speed of light as if it was just 2 meters per second. In other words, they were able to move objects at near the speed of light because the speed of light was just really slow. And here is roughly what all of this looked like. Now it is kind of difficult to see, mostly because this is still pretty fast, but in a nutshell, it does show us an object that's essentially rotating. Here this was a cube and a sphere moving at 0.999 speed of light. And that's because, once again, the light from different points took a little bit longer to reach the camera. And so even though the photons do reach our eye at the same time, they are coming from slightly different locations on the object. For example, the photon from one of the corners traveled a little bit longer, making the object appear stretched and skewed, which is once again visualized a little bit better right here. And that's of course a combination of relativistic length contraction and the fact that the light has a speed limit so it reaches our eyes at different times. And though obviously this is not a true speed of light, this was just a simulation, it was still the first time ever something like this was created in a lab. In this case the cube appears a little bit twisted and the sphere remains a sphere. But one of its points is rotated and is in a slightly different position. Here's roughly what the schematic of this would look like. But what exactly is this for and is there any practical use? For example, for length contraction and for time dilation, we do have real-life examples. Here though, maybe not so much. However, back in the days when the Project Starshot was still kind of in development and when we actually thought it might happen after all, that's the project that involved super fast moving probes accelerated by powerful lasers in order to explore the nearby Alpha Centauri system. In this case, it has been suggested that by using this phenomenon and by measuring the overall rotation of various planets, or their appearance that is, it might be possible to actually measure their mass and possibly some other properties. In other words, by using the Terrell effect, a very fast moving probe might be able to use visual observations to determine certain parameters of a planet. But that's so far the only practical application and chances are we're not going to find any more anytime soon. As a matter of fact, this project is unlikely to ever happen as well. You can learn about why and what's going on in one of the previous videos in the description. But this experiment and this visualization is very impressive. Which means that we'll probably come back and discuss something similar in some of the future videos in the next few months. Until then, all of the links are in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, support this channel on Patreon, which now includes a lot of additional videos and a lot of ad-free videos, some which you've probably never seen before. Consider joining the YouTube channel membership, maybe buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.